We are live. Yes. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Faris and the rest of the world. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Kif halak ya ustadna? How are you, sir? I'm fine, thanks. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, alhamdulillah. I'm very happy to be with you today. Um, oh, it's been uh, it's been a long time. I think the first time we ever met was on a on a da'wah platform, صح? Yes, uh, yes. And then we maybe what met once again for breakfast. We had a yes. nice CrossFit discussion. Uh, cross speaking of deb cross yeah, cross the, debate, the debate of CrossFit, right? Is is CrossFit <laughs> debatable? And then, <laughs> alhamdulillah, it took a while before we uh, touching base again and finally doing something uh, on, you know, collaborative. Uh, and bi azza wa we ask Allah to make it beneficial and, and useful and, uh, and you know, a source of khair for us and for all those who watch. Allahumma amin. Allahumma amin. Um, I, I, people have been asking uh, a, a small introduction, if you don't mind, uh, about yourself. Uh, so, you know, you, maybe my audience is not familiar with you, maybe your audience is not familiar with me, so it'll be a good opportunity for, for us to maybe share audience in some way. Sure, 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 yes. Sure. Can I start or you want to start? لا, uh, طبعا, you start, Charles. You're the guest. طيب, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. طبعا, my name is Fadis al Hamadi. I'm from the UAE. I'm an Emirati citizen. Um, 39 years old. I've been... I've been uh, on social media, trying to teach people about Islam and, and really trying to fix the tainted picture and the distorted picture of Islam within the Muslim com community and within uh, the non-Muslims too. And I, I know, I know you you share this idea with me too that Islam today is 100%. misunderstood, yeah, by 100%. Muslims and non. And Wallahi, your efforts and the other brothers' efforts is wonderful, Masha Allah. But as you know, Yani. It's still not enough. The demand is so high, and the su supply is is Allah al -Mustani. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to just yani, reward us and accept our our acts. So I started around five six years ago with social media. I started with with Instagram, making some some uh, some videos. My background: I haven't studied Sharia academically, but I've been studying it ten uh, for, for more than ten years now with shuyukh and mashayikh. You know the classical way. In, in, in mosques, uh, alhamdulillah, I have a lot of sheikhs and mentors. Before I started and I, I, I uttered any word publicly about Islam, I asked my sheikhs, Sheikh, do you think I should do this or no? They said, yes, of course, go ahead in English, we need this. Alhamdulillah, uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. So my background is I'm, I'm, in, I'm in management and I, I work in a rehab center for drug addiction. It's a government sector. And we help yeah. drug addicts get off this uh, this poison. Uh, I have a master's degree in strategic marketing. I have an innovation diploma from Imperial College of in, in London. And uh, I've been doing CrossFit, and I don't like CrossFit anymore. And I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh Abu Musab knows this. And maybe in another day, another video, yeah. we can talk about this later because it's a big hey. big debate. <laughs> but that's me in a nutshell, you know. <laughs> Well, the question is, are we going to have a debate? That's the point right now. If let's say, this is a classic example, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, Sheikh Faris used to be a crossfitter. He had his experience. He came to the conclusion, rightfully, I would say maybe, that it is not the ideal way for you to uh, maintain your health and fitness, so on and so forth. Um, yes. I'm, I'm a late comer. I obviously joined the community and, and became a crossfitter afterwards. It's a lot of noise afterwards um and i feel the exact opposite so now we have two opinions here each based on a subjective experience with crossfit i'm still doing it and i'm, I'm completely happy with it uh, the sheikh feels otherwise a, a question should we have a debate on this particular subject now if you if you want to please the crowd and i think that's a good intro to to our discussion if you if we are crowd pleasers i am sure I am sure if I said I'm going to give you a dars on uh, asma and sifat uh, or on uh, tawheed uh, of any type of tawheed, rububiyya or, or uh, uluhiyya uh, mm -hmm. or a fiqh class versus having a debate on any particular mm -hmm. subject, I would say maybe 95% of the people would be, they will come for the debate, they will join the debate, anything that has uh, heat, anything that has uh, back and forth, anything that is 
that is adorned with this kind of confrontation, it, it goes like what it burns like you know wildfire. It will just it will it will be everywhere. Yep. Versus any given topic about any knowledge related subject, you see the attendees. We know from experience, twenty people, thirty people, forty people. Allahu alam. Yani more or less. So by default, we already know that the concept of debating is attractive. It is attractive uh, to the crowd. I guess the question which we will try to tackle is, does that, do we have in Islam al-ghaya to barrirul wasila? The means justify the end. Meaning, if, if I'm trying to deliver the truth to the people and I'm going to do it through whatever means available to me just so that I can deliver the truth. Is this something that Islam accepts? Where we could say, it doesn't matter whether you do it through debate, you do it through a lecture, you write a book, it doesn't matter. As long as you deliver the truth, then it's all good. Or do we have some guidelines in Islam that takes us back to the tradition of the Sahaba, the Prophet Sallam, and the Sahaba and the early generations, and what was their stance about a, a, a subject of this uh, nature? How did they deal with it so we could follow their footsteps? Because surely they had the best way. They were the most guided, they were the most blessed, and so following them would be ideal. In, regardless of what people think today or what people prefer, I think what we will be discussing is how Islamic or to which, how much room is in Islam within the way of the methodology of the righteous predecessors that allows you to enter this area or this arena of debating with people, what are the criteria, who, how, and all that stuff. Yep. Tayyip. The first question, which I'm assuming most people would have, is, or maybe we should begin with some some uh, definitions and and yani um, maani. What is exactly um, debate, and you know how? What, what is that? What's your opinion, yeah, Ustad? Allah, first of all, yeah, we we look at debates and and we want to know where did it come from. It's interesting that debates. It's really back even before we were even created. Not debates as in debates, but Having just as you explained, you have an idea, and the other part has an idea, and they conflict, and you want to understand or reach truth or an agreement, and this is what the debate is. In, in, in Arabic, it's called al munadhara munadhara mm. al jidal, and this is basically it. I have an idea that conflicts with your idea or an opinion or a view or anything like that, and we set we we meet with each other and we share our ideas together. Or maybe you refute my idea and I refute your idea and we reach an agreement or we try to like it's a winning kind of contest. There's a competition between that or between these two people. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, before we were even born uh, or created, uh, when, the, when the malaika, it's not a debate per se, but it is a conflicting idea. When the malaika said, وَإِلْقَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ تَإِنِّي جَاعَنُ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فَيَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَا the malaika, the angels were surprised. They couldn't understand what was going on. And there was a dialogue there. And subhanAllah, even when the shaitan came, and he also had a little dialogue with, with our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, about, about, uh, about Adam and uh, sujood li Adam. So this actually, this concept was there before even Islam. And even in Islam, the Quran, uh, يعني, Allah Azza wa talked about this in Islam, in, in, in the Quran. Talked about it when Ibrahim uh, debated with the Namrud. Talked about it when Musa debated with Fir'aun. Talked about it when uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam debated with, with the Christians. For it does exist. And like you said, where or how do we use this? It is a tool and it's been used. But subhanAllah, even in the Quran, it's mentioned in a good way and it's mentioned in a bad way. And Allah Azza wa Jal يقول في, في, في القرآن على أهل الأهواء uh, عفوا بس أقرأ الآيات طبعا ذم في ذم في, في المناظرات ذم كثير Allah Azza wa Jal يقول ولا تجادل أهل الكتاب إلا بالتي هي أحسن الله عز وجل يقول ادعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن فالله عز وجل ذكر he talked about these things he talked about جدال he talked about debates in the Quran and that we should debate in some situations but also سبحان الله if you look also 
الله عز وجل قال في القرآن أيضا ومن الناس من يجادل في الله بغير علم ويتبع كل شيطان مريد people will start debating about Allah about the Quran about this but without knowledge so debate and jidal and munadharat was mentioned in a good way and in a bad way hey, can you hear me yeah, yeah, I can hear you. You're there? You kind of went somewhere yeah, and then came back. Yeah, we, yeah, the internet decided to take a little break on its own. MashaAllah, tzbarakallah, and we're, we're back on. So forgive me. And no problem. So, and no, also, no yeah, please, please add, add if, you, if you have anything to add about I, I, I will, I will in a moment. Just finish your, finish your thought, inshallah. For, like I said, the debate is there in the Quran. The debate was there before we got created. Uh, and the dialogue of conflicting ideas was there. And it was done for many purposes. One of the main purposes is that إظهار الحق You want to show what is the truth. Or you want to refute what is bad or evil or wrong with what is good. Replace it. ولازم, this is a قاعدة. We have to understand this, this rule, this, this uh, main rule principle in life. في حق في شيء اسمه الحق is my absolute truth mm. because nowadays people think that everything is subjective everything is up for debate everything is well, my opinion in your opinion and maybe you're right and I'm right and we're both right la, la. Islam especially in Islam especially when we talk about religion there's no such thing as my opinion your opinion some things of course like I like we all know some things are disputed among the scholars but there are things that is absolute truth and we have to understand and agree to that. And that's why, subhanAllah, debate is there. It got created. And one of the reasons why debate is there is because jahl, ignorance, uninformation, and also because of desire. People in their hearts, they have, they have desire, they have uh, different kind of uh, personal gains, hawa. Uh, so they start to create a different kind of conflicting opinion. To the truth, and this is how it's been built throughout history. Even in Islam, fi tarikh al Islam, how did debate started happening? It's because of qassasin, wahl al ahwa, wahl al bid'a. The, the innovators, the people are. It got created within, so the Muslims started even debating and refuting and all that stuff. And we'll talk about debates and refuting. What's the difference between them? And also even giving da'wah and putting converting people to Islam, non-Muslims. We. We debate, and just like the Prophet ﷺ debated the Christians. So there are many levels of, of debates. There are many reasons for debating. There are many purposes for debating. There are many ways of debating also. On people, who do we debate and all that? Within, outside. Yeah, so, so fundamentally... Yeah, no, no, nothing. I'm just closing. That's the origin of debaters. So if I when I when I did the research on the subject, honestly, um, I was I was surprised at the uh, the the level of blameworthiness uh, that the earlier generations expressed uh, towards the concept of al, -Al jidal in general. Um, they've they acknowledged a certain I would say very limited scope, a very limited mm. scope. Of, of debates they had a lot of prerequisites they had a lot of conditions um, they've mentioned for example that in the Quran in general um, the jidal has been mentioned in uh, with a negative connotation uh, generally it was it was it said not to happen first it was the first is an nahi the first the first thing that came was an nahi prohibition and then Allah Azza wa Jal restricted that إِلَّا بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنْ And this التي, no. إِلَّا بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنْ is where all the, the juice is. This is where all the, the meat is. Because in order to be able to fulfill this area where you go on to argue with a contender of some sort, there are a lot of things that have to be established pertaining to the person involved in the munadhara. The, the debater himself has to meet a lot of requirements, which, which is the... the the, the trial that we're going through at this day and time is that what we see online in the social media world is that debating became a trend. It's actually a trend that anybody who has some presence online and technically has a microphone and a camera 
you know, finds any 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 confused person out there. Sometimes really, really, uh, uh, I would say bad targets, bad examples of people that are not worthy of being debated, people that are not fetching or searching for the truth, uh, people that have a, a very nasty agenda against Islam, people that are actually trying to become popular on 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 the on behalf of the Muslims on on by riding getting a piggyback ride on the back of the Muslims and knowingly or unknowingly uh, some of our brothers with good intention or otherwise are actually giving these people this platform and allowing them to spread uh, corruption among the Muslims specifically to an audience that is preferring this method of acquiring knowledge over the traditional method which we both speak about. The traditional way of acquiring knowledge is not done by you listening to a bunch of debates and then seeing how this person argued versus that person and so on and so forth. Because if, if we want to quote some of the, uh, for example, you have the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, مَا ضَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدَ هُدَى and this hadith was authenticated by Sheikh Al-Bani. No group of people go astray after having been guided except that they will be tested with argumentation. The, the concept of, of fall, falling into argument constantly will deter you from being able to learn Islam properly. This is why I'm very uh, critical of of debates and you've heard me and see me uh, speak yeah, uh, against them. I want you, I want you, I want you to say or to, to, to tell me or just to mention uh, why why was this um, uh, you know this this uh, meeting uh, what triggered this meeting? What what triggered this <laughs> meeting? Yeah, were were actually were two events. One two. which one which was a complete disaster, and one which was a semi disaster, but it it made it. It 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 was like the 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 thing that made the back of the camel break. You know the expression. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, first, it was the uh, and I, I don't I don't mind just mention names. It was the debate between Ali Dawa with some uh, with this uh, a pus whatever his name is some some apostate some ex Muslim yeah. who is ex-Muslim. now yeah is completely on the other side of the spectrum. And he has no business in life. He has no uh, no goal, no hobby, except to debate Muslims, knowing very well that he will come with offensive statements, with with uh, you know de- de- degrading the religion, speaking ill of the Prophet sallam, cursing Allah, everything that you could imagine. You already know this is in, in his arsenal, and mm-hmm. he's and then yet he's being being exposed to uh, the Muslims, who in in retaliation will wind up also cursing him. And you know, speaking ill, they they become fans and cheerleaders of of this group versus another. Of course, there was unacceptable demeanor and behavior in conducting the debates, and which is which is the main reason why this topic is being addressed. Because yeah. you, even if even if debates were allowed, are you are you actually able to meet the criteria to be a, a legitimate debater in Islam? Believe it or not, it's I would most, if not all, those who are debating today are underqualified. They're underqualified. Any one of us could be could could be given the the art of of uh, being a lawyer and knowing how to argue and articulate an argument and defend a certain principle. I, I could defend something false. I could be so well versed. Some people are so articulate and so uh, skilled that you know lawyers that will will get a criminal off the hook. Because they know how to tweak and play with words and how to play on people's emotions. Um, yep. Sometimes the people you're debating are skilled in this manner. And you're not paying mm-hmm. attention. You're happy that we've declared victory for one entity versus the other. When in reality, we just destroyed a lot of people unknowingly who now are confused or who might have a doubt cast into them that never existed before. So that was the first debate, and then it was the debate of Daniel uh, Hakikachu, whom we have a number of issues with regarding, uh, uh, you know, takfir and khuruj in speaking ill about the people in charge and other issues, plenty of them. And then his debate with this uh, feminist Muslim uh, about the uh, I equal education. I, I, I watched it before this uh, this meeting, by the way. 
it, oh, like you said, it just destroyed my brain cells. Wallahi, this this was the most stressful moment of my life. One of the yeah. most stressful moments of my life. It's absolutely يعني, a disaster, like you said. It's a disaster. Now, the interesting thing, uh, uh, Sheikh Faris, is that the audience, and I know this from the comment section, they're, they're very happy and pleased with uh, the fact that they believe from their, see, again, according to their scope of knowledge, that Daniel or Daniel destroyed her. Yeah, the, you're missing the bigger picture yeah. when you're when you're when you're uh, arguing with someone who's upon complete falsehood. Honestly, even if your bid'ah was very cheap, even if you have very low quality merchandise, you're mm -hmm. still going to defeat someone with no merchandise. You're still better yep. off than the person. But but this is this is how we we don't look at things in Islam as a black and white. We look at masalih and mafasid. There's exactly. ultimately benefits. There are ultimately uh, uh, harms. Are the harms, or is the harm that that came out of such debate superior to the uh, benefit? Then this is where only people of knowledge, or only students of knowledge, or only people who are well versed in this field, only experts, can actually shed light on the subject. It is not for everybody who's uh, as an as a viewer, as an observant, as a recipient. Not everybody is in a position to make this assessment because it remains to be your subjective opinion that she was destroyed when in reality, we opened the door for a lot of question marks which might not have existed. And we yeah. agree that these, these feminists or people with such agenda uh, should not be yeah. given, should be refuted. And this is where we should speak about refutation. We are all, yeah. all for refutation. You could refute yeah. all you want. So if, if there's a feminist agenda out there, I can come and give a talk about the yes. dangers of feminism and this and so on and so forth. And I can still highlight the truth without exposing the average Muslims mm. to the opinions of those contenders when we know, based on their track record, they're not there to learn the truth. They've already mm. learned the truth and they've articulated arguments against the truth and Allah Azza wa Jal already warned us in the Quran in the most explicit uh, ayat you can find. That was explicit. إذا رأيتم الذين يتبعون ما تشابه فأولئك الذين سمى الله فاحذروهم. It is he who sent down upon you the book. In this in this book there are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book. And others that are unspecific, they're ambiguous. As for those in whose hearts is a deviation from the truth, they will follow that of which is unspecific. Seeking yeah. discord and seeking an interpretation suitable to them. And no yep. one knows its true interpretation except Allah, but those firm mm. in knowledge according to one tafsir of the ayah, another tafsir of the ayah, and also those who know the interpretation are those who are firm in knowledge. They say, we believe in all of it. We believe in it. All of it is from our Lord. Uh, and no one will be reminded except those of understanding. Meaning, mm. even when you read this ayah right now, as you hear this ayah, not everybody will still understand the purpose and the wisdom behind the ayah. Some people will still not get it. It will go fly right over their head because they don't have that an understanding that we're being warned. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you see those people that select al-mutashabih, it is those whom Allah has named, meaning those are the ones whom Allah was speaking about, فحذروهم, so be wary of them. You know someone who's going to leave alone the haqq, which is, which is irrefutable, undebatable, not open for interpretation, not open for opinions. It's the haqq from Allah Azza wa Jal. It's black and white. You see someone, leave that off and go to some uh, hadith somewhere, some ayah yeah. somewhere, something mutashabih, and they've already absorbed this mentality. And then you yeah. give them a platform so that they can share this with the people when Allah is telling, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling you, be wary of them. Do you, do you bring a thief into your house and so you can protect yourself from the robbery of the thief? You don't, you don't, you don't give them any room. You don't give them any chance to speak. You close all the doors in their face. They are dying. They are dying to voice their opinions. They are dying to cause mischief. 
And you were basically saying, here, look, I want to defeat you in the debate. Tafaddal, and you bring them on and you eat chips and grapes and, and potatoes during the debate and you act uh, inappropriately. And then we scream at the end that, mashallah, tabarakallah, intasar al-haq, and the Muslims are this and the Muslims are that. While we're, in reality, we haven't given da'wah to Islam. We've, we've confused the, the younger generation who are now not interested in acquiring knowledge. Now, then, then at home, their, their, main, their main thing is looking from one debate to another and absorbing this information on, on, on regular basis, on daily basis, on weekly basis. I have more to say, but I don't want to hold the mic for too long. Tafaddal, Ustadi. لا أنا أشوف شيخ وجدي let's take a step back now طبعا أنت you focus on something that's extremely important and I completely 100% what you said is is uh, I agree with in the NAS you, you, you put up this publicly and you talk about it and it, it will get affected people are going to get going to get affected in a negative way and that's extremely extremely dangerous and critical but let's take a step back أنت أصلا أنت you the Muslim who's debating what kind of arrogance do you have? And no, Allah, I'm going to open my chest like this and let me take some bullets of shubuhat in front of everyone. And I'm okay, guys. Don't worry about me. I'm the Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the, the junior of modern day. La Habibi, what's going on? What about the Salaf? Didn't you read what they used to do? Ya khi, as Salaf, uh, Imam Malik, or Imam Shafi'i, or Kathir bin as Salaf. People, Mubtadi'ah, used to come to them, people of desire. Ya Abu Fulan, I want to tell you one thing. Just we want to talk to you about one. La, la, la. He, he used to cut him off. He says, he put, they put their fingers in their ear and they run from them. Not publicly. Just him, him and the Imam trying to debate something, trying to discuss something in Islam. He says, Wala shay, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to discuss anything with you. Hassan al-Basri, one guy came to me. He's like, I want to debate with you about something. Mu'tazila, one of the Mu'tazila. He told him, he told him, I am okay with my religion. I don't have any doubts. You have a doubt, go debate with somebody who's doubtful like you. I'm alhamdulillah, I'm okay. And all the, all the other uh, salaf and the pious people came after us. They used to say, shuba khattaf wal qulub My, they don't, they don't guarantee their own hearts. Adhan al-Hasan al-Basri qal, jahadtu nafsi arba'ina sana bisabab al-ikhlas, sincerity only, he is fighting with himself just 40 years to fix that ikhlas, that sincerity in his heart. Allahu Akbar. Yani inta, inta ya Shaykh al-Islam, so-called, you want to come and debate with these people and you think you're a superhero. First of all, you don't know about your ikhlas in your heart because you're definitely, all the people who today who are debate, debating in the, in the da'wah scene in English, yani I see them. A lot of them are not even eligible to say a word in Islam. Inta, inta zainik Muslim, Seek knowledge, but don't come and talk about da'wah and to, to call to Islam because you're not knowledgeable. That's number one. Number two, you're exposing yourself to, to, to shubuhat and you don't know what's going to happen. Number three, you're exposing yourself to, uh, to ujb, impression, impress, impressiveness, and people you know, praising you. Exactly. Why are you exposing yourself to these things? Save yourself from the hellfire. When I look at these people, I say, subhanAllah, what kind of level of confidence this guy reach that he is opening a mic and a camera publicly and just, you know, getting hit with, with these shubuhat and these debates and these insults. And it's crazy, you know, it's, it's just crazy. Anyways, uh, 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 I'll let me reinforce that. I want to reinforce that with a couple of quotations from, from, the, from the Salaf. Uh, Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani said, لا أعلم أحد من أهل الهواء يقاسم إلا بالمتشابه. Back to the ayah we just mentioned that he doesn't, no one, none from the people of desires will argue except that they will use the mutashabih. So the fundamental principle is that will, they will always rely on something that is suspicious. Now, the, the righteous predecessors, they were so particular before even I speak about Al-Hasan al-Basri. Let's go back to Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said, إِنَّ التَّكْذِيبَ بِالْقَدَرْ شِرْكِ فُتِحَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ الضَّلَالَ فَلَا تُجَادِلُوهُمْ فَيَجْرِي شِرْكُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَيْدِيكُمْ He said, the, uh, the, the belying and denying the preordainment of Allah, denying decree is, uh, is shirk, 
It's a it's an act of of uh, associating partners with Allah, a polytheism. It's an act that contra contradicts iman. That has been that has been uh, opened up. You meaning you've been exposed to it by the people of innovation. So do not argue with them, so that their shirk does not spread through you. Mm -hmm. This right here should be made the 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 hallmark for the entire discussion. That so even though even though you might have a point, you have to be very careful as to you not becoming the service provider and the spreader of this misinformation. Besides the fact that, as you said, you're exposing yourself to this shubha, which is contrary to the way of the righteous predecessors. For example, Hassan al-Basri and uh, Muhammad bin Salim said, لا تجالسوا أصحاب الأهواء ولا تجادلوهم ولا تسمعوا منهم Do not mm -hmm. sit with the people of innovation. <laughs> Do not argue with them. Do not even listen. Do not even hear anything that they have to say. Do not even listen to what they have to say. So if you observe the righteous predecessors, when people wanted to argue with them on the matter of their religion, they would shun those people. They would not give them room. Imam Malik, when the person entered, كيف استوى الرحمن على العرش? And he told them, as you know, الاستواء معلوم والكيف مجهول إلى آخره. قال فأخرجوا. Take this person out of the masjid. لا أراك إلا مبتدعا. He's an innovator and he got him, he got him kicked out of the masjid in order for these people not to spread their shubuhat. The Sheikh himself, the Shuyukh themselves, Imam Shafi'i said, I've never, I've never debated an ignorant person except that he defeated me. And I've never debated a knowledgeable per person except that I defeated him. Because oh. when you argue with people that are not knowledgeable, they will play around with words, they will play around with they concepts. Don't have they, like you do. They're all over the place. Hey, they don't yeah. fear Allah. They don't fear Allah in the subject. So they have no problem in lying. They have no problem in slandering you. Just like what happened with, with the Daniel. He was slandered by this lady. said all types of crazy stuff about him, which may ruin his life in totality. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, there's no, there's no, nothing holding him back. Think about it. What would make you even sit with someone like this? If the earlier scholars, those who were who, who were rasikhin fil ilm, they were firm in knowledge. They have been doing this for so many years. When the people of innovation would come to them, they say, yo, just, you know, leave me alone. I'm not even trying to have a conversation with you. You're confused about your religion. I'm not confused about mine. Look at our condition today. We learn from a few places We do a few researches on, on Google. For Allah's sake, ya jama'a, let's be very clear. Let's call a spade a spade. We do a Google research, which any one of you is capable of doing right now. And then yeah. here we are. Here we are debating some serious subjects that require a person that knows exactly what they're talking about, that knows the wajul istidlal, how to, how to use this evidence, for which purpose, which, what is applicable, what is not. There's, there's so much in the Quran and the Sunnah that if you're not familiar with, You might wind up saying something about the deen that is actually not part of the deen or vice versa. And let's keep it real. Those brothers who are giving those debates or engaging in those debates, even those who are knowledgeable of them, uh, one of them, I don't want to mention his name because this it always creates extra fitna when you mention his name. This brother who may be the most knowledgeable among them, he out of three ayat he quotes, he will, he will misquote two and a half. He can never give one ayah because he's always off the top of his head. He can never, almost never quote an ayah properly. Obviously, the audience don't know the Quran either. So even though he will distort the ayah, he will change a word. He will, you know, يَرْفَعَ الْمَجْزُوءِ الْمَكْسُورِ وَيَفْتَحَ الْمَدْرِ إِشْ He will change all the diacritical signs from dhamma to fatha to kasra because this is the grammatical position of the word. If it's supposed to be, uh, you know, if it's supposed to be maf'ul bihi, it becomes the fa'il. If it's the object of the sentence, it becomes the subject. All of these will change the meaning. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ If you say, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ You've committed shirk. You said that Allah is afraid of the scholars. Instead of saying that Allah, Allah is feared by the scholars. Those yeah. people cannot even articulate this ayah or any ayah for this matter. Mistakes all across the debates, whether with Muslims or non-Muslims. And that is the biggest proof and evidence that, أخي, you should not be... On this pedestal, you should not be on this platform, and you surely should not be discussing the matters of the religion like this in front of awam, in front of laymen, regular average Muslims who themselves are looking for guidance. And now suddenly you dumped on them a, a massive amount of information, a lot of confusion, a lot of back and forth. But because we love wrestling, 
and we love boxing and we love fighting. We look at it as a boxing match between two. We want to, you know, support the Muslim. Where's the Muslim? The one who we presume to be upon the haq. We're going to be on his side. And because of this, we're all in uh, for this mentality and for this uh, behavior and this trend. But this trend yeah. is harming the da'wah. The da'wah was way more effective before this became the thing right now, where every other day some fulan brings another fulan on a platform, and then the views of these videos, hundreds of thousands. Versus yeah. the ilm, which is beneficial for the people, no one cares. Why? Yeah. What's, what's making it less interesting? And what's making debates more appealing is this the reality, that no one is speaking against it, and, and even now, you will see people that will debate. And they will say, ah, this is because you cannot do as good as he can. You're not debating others because you're not as qualified. Yeah, yeah. you want to have a peace of mind. Subhanallah al -Azim. We know the truth. You convey the truth. Tfadali, Ustad. Well, I just want to put some stru structure on, on what we just discussed. Yani, طيب, uh, Faris, uh, Sheikh Wajdi, you guys are so negative. Yani, sakkar bab al-debate, wala shul mawdu, طيب, Ibn Taymiyyah, the other mashayikh, they also debated. Ah, yes, they did debate. طيب, let's put some structure. Structure. What is a good debate and what is a bad debate and when can we debate? Awal, yeah. Debates cannot be out of four scenarios. Four types of debates. في المجادلة debates. للحق بالحق للحق بالحق للحق وفي debates للحق بالباطل تمام وفي انا اكسبلين تو وفي ديبيتس بالباطل للحق وفي ديبيتس بالباطل للباطل للباطل يا لطيف <تصفيق> طيب وير فولوينج طيب. ماشي حق بالحق يو مينز مينينج اي هاف ذا تروث اند اي وونت ذا تروث وات اي هاف از ذا تروث ماي ايديا از ذا تروث اند وات اي وونت فور بيبل از ذا تروث اند ذس از ذا بيست واي اند ذس از ذا كوريكت واي ذا اذر وايز ار نوت كوريكت طيب ديبيتينج حق فور حق It's also situational. How? Okay. You have to see, like you mentioned, Sheikh Wadi, Masalih Mafasib. When can we do it? When not to do it? Who can do it? Who are you debating? Aslan, is he worth it? And as you, you mentioned and I mentioned about the, the stance of the Salaf with, the, with Ahl al Ahwa. So hmm. this is also situational. feel people who debate haq, but for batil. What does that mean? Meaning, I have the haq, but I'm not doing it for the haq. Uh -huh. My stance is the haq, but I'm doing it for personal gains. I'm doing it to shame the person. I'm doing it for more followers. I'm doing it maybe for money, whatever the reason is. Ha, that you have the haq, but you're not doing it for the sake of Allah. You're not doing it for the purpose of haq, for the truth. Can I, can I add a little me. comment on this? And, and Sheikh, this is, uh, and uh, brothers and sisters, this is a very, very fine line right there. Don't mm -hmm. overlook this. Because you could, you could very well start with this noble intention and you get dragged into this, into this area where things now become confusing and then your, your intentions change. So huh. always be careful. Just because you started off on a good intention and you were sincere for the sake of Allah, it does not mean that you will continue because as long as you expose yourself, then this is definitely going to conflict with your uh, ikhlas. Because the nature of debate is you, you're going to be sassy and you're going to be, you want to show off, you want to prove that you're, you're capable, that you're qualified. So it's, it's very tricky. Tfaddal. Jazakallah khair. nas, there are people who have batil. They have falsehood. They are calling for falsehood. Then they're debating with falsehood as their, their opinion or their approach. But they're doing it for the sake of Allah. They're doing it for haq. So debating falsehood for the truth, for the haq. And this is like, for example, Ahl al -Bidah. No. Or, for example, Christians who are fighting, debating against uh, atheists. Hey, yeah, I've seen a lot of they're, those. They hey. are calling for the truth, but their they're debate, they're Christians. They're not the truth. And so also this, because their standards, their structure, their fundamental is wrong. Their fundamental is wrong. He's debating, wallah, an atheist. And he's, what, what is he using? Or he's a guy who has falsehood and he's debating for the haq. And there's one person who I think you've talked about him before, which is using philosophy in the name of Islam. Hey. Philosophy, ma philosophy, ilm al-kalam, and then, wallah, why? For, for, for the sake of Islam. La, habibi, ghalat. That's like when, when the Ashaira debate the Shia. For example, you have Ashaira debating the Shia. 
Yeah, my so, sale. Yeah. So yeah. this is wrong. Uh, exactly. And finally, uh, sorry, you wanted to add something? No, no, no. I was just wanting to mention that example. Tfaddal. Finally, feel batal bil batal. انت اصلا عندك باطل يو هاف فولس هود اند يو كولينج فور فولس هود يعني بطيخه في بطيخه طبعا ذس از فيري كلير ذس از فيري كلير هذا يعني اهل الشر ويتش از اوف كورس ذا ايثيست ذا فيمينست ذا هو ايفر ات از ذي هاف فولس هود اند كولينج فور فولس هود طيب انت وين يو ار اوت اوف ذيس فور تايبس يو ذا فيرست وان ان شاء الله وي سي يو هاف ذا حق But and you are calling for the haq inshallah. We're being very and husn al being very positive about it. Ma'adhalik. On top of that, there are conditions and conditions and conditions about it. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to have sincerity. You have to be well versed. Taib fi nas. Wallahi, I know people. Wallahi, mashaAllah, they are great students of knowledge. But come talk to him. He cannot. He 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 doesn't have the skills to Sorry. come and speak. Or, or to debate, but you don't have the tools to convey the message, and that's a problem. For there are so many conditions, the matter is very delicate, very critical. Or the opposite, yeah, yeah. the opposite is when you when you are very good in in articulating, but you don't have the uh, resources. You don't have yeah. you don't have the tasil. You don't have the tasil al yeah. that that uh, allows you that permits you. To actually so, enter into this field, so you become like what they call halta blail. You're like a, a, a person who's trying to cut down trees at night. You don't see, you don't see in front of you. Just swinging your your axe left and right, hoping hoping that you will cut a tree. You could actually be chopping people's heads, and this is prob. This fits the this fits the description of most of these people that are in, involving themselves in debates right now, whether in Hyde Park uh, in in the UK, right, and in, in this uh, speakers' corner. Every, anybody now who reads the uh, you know book of Ahmad Didat rahimahullah and you know um, on uh, the, anything between the Muslims and the Christians, then they go to the uh, speaker's corner and now they want to give a, a, de a debate. And I've seen many many people get destroyed by the by the people of innovation or by the people of falsehood or by even a Christian or even an atheist because they were not able to defend the truth. And that is one of the most critical points that the scholars warn against. They warn mm -hmm. against they warn against the idea that you may put yourself forward. Thinking, thinking that you're qualified and fit only for you to fail in your mission in that mm. debate. And then you allow now the people of falsehood to mock mm. the people of truth, to make fun of them and to say that they were, uh, they have no ability, they have no truth with them, they have no uh, means to defend uh, their religion and so on and so forth. And that is something that none of you can deny. When mm -hmm. you look at those debates, you will agree that some of them seem to be more successful And some of them, mm, not too much. And some of them, Allah, he could have done better. See, as long as we have this assessment, that means that we are entering an area where we're actually gambling with the truth. It's like you go into a casino, you have the Great. truth with you, you go into a casino, and you're now, you're, you're playing, you're gambling. What if, mm. ya akhi, what if Allah Azza wa Jal uh, extracted success from you? What if Allah deprived you of tawfiq? during this talk for whatever uh, for whatever reason in your heart and as a result of that you failed in representing Islam and you know that those you're not speaking in front of four or five people like back in the day anything you put online is automatically now thousands and hundreds of thousands for, for maybe years to come do you know what kind of harm you've done the da'wah and what kind of disservice you have done for Islam and do you guarantee that after third fourth attempt you will not wind up failing As it's happening, maybe you've yep. had a few successful debates and now you feel that you're confident enough to, to go into this field. You, you are actually playing with fire. And worse, it's not, it's not about you, brother. It's not about you. We're interested in the message you're trying to convey to the people. The reason why we're having this discussion is not because of an individual. We could remove Daniel's name and Ali Da'wa's name and put some other names there. It doesn't matter. The fact that you are putting yourself in the forefront to speak about Islam, But not mm. in a way where you could prepare, you know, you're preparing your own, you know, you've memorized your evidences and then you're giving a talk uh, in front mm. of a camera. You made a mistake. You can edit the video. You're going live. It's a live debate where anything goes and any okay. mistake can happen. And you could suddenly not know a basic ayah that is fundamental in silencing the, the, the opponent. Your audience doesn't know any better. So now they think in the Quran, there's nothing that addresses this particular point. 
or in the hadith, there's nothing to address that particular point. Where if you were to sit with the alim, that would not even be open to question. So debates are okay. If the person given the debate is someone who has actually met all these prerequisites, the question yep. is who has? Who has today in, in the Dao field well, in English? No, I haven't seen, to be honest, till this day, maybe, I don't know, maybe there is someone who's out there. But till today, I haven't seen anyone who, who really fulfills this. Yani, uh, Sheikh Faris, let me be very honest. Uh, Ahmad Didat, rahimahullah. Tamam? Mm. Ahmad Didat. N none of us will deny that when it came to Christianity, he single-handedly destroyed Christians. Tamam? Yet, yet, because he was not a student of knowledge and he was not knowledgeable, he had a distorted understanding of Aqidah and yep. specifically the names, yep. names, names and attributes of Allah. And I've heard okay. him with my own ear, with my own ear, deny that Allah Azza wa Jal is uh, above the heavens and that Allah Azza wa Jal has a face and all of the names and attributes which we spend years in trying to educate the Muslims and tell them from the Quran, the Sunnah, this and that. He, in a single statement, nonchalantly, actually with mockery, ghafar Allah lah, he wind up destroying this aspect of our aqidah with, and he was very articulate and he was very well spoken. He mm. destroyed this aspect of the aqidah completely. Telling you so, that we don't believe in any of those attributes the way Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe in them. Type. Now, we, while we appreciate the effort, look, we can all agree that he was a, a, a lion when it came to debating them. But then you have to think about all of the Muslims who heard this debate, who don't know any better. And the end result for them is that, yes, yeah. Islam is true. Christianity is not. But they also now don't understand who Allah Azza wa Jal is. They yeah. don't have a proper understanding of the names of Allah. And I'm giving you an example of someone that we can all agree was fit for the job, but lack of information about Islam, lack of studying Islam. He spent the whole time studying the Bible. He missed out on this very important aspect of our religion. So what By about, the way, yeah, Sheikh, what you, yani subhanallah, I'm not calling them Christians. The Christians don't understand Allah. We, took, we got away from that, but we fell into another trap which... Also, we don't understand Allah. They misunderstood Allah. They said Allah has a family. This is a misunderstanding of who Allah is. And yeah. Ahmad Didat made you fall into the same trap, which misunderstanding Allah. Allah is not up. Allah is not in the sky. All that stuff. So, Subhanallah. Yeah, and so the, 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 that's what I'm saying. When we think of prime examples of what we consider to be successful debaters, we we can still see a major loophole. And a major defect that what concerns us the most will impact the Muslims negatively. At the end of the day, the purpose that we have is the well-being of your iman. You want to live your life having a proper understanding of the purpose of life, knowing who Allah Azza wa Jal is, worshipping to the best of your ability, worshipping Him to the best of your ability, and uh, you know, moving on that path in a, in a consistent, steady uh, manner. That's all yep. that we care for. Anything, anything which cut any external uh, innovation, any external trend, any external uh, uh, element which may interfere with this journey of yours and ours, because we're all on the same journey, it has to be called out. It has yep. to be called out and it is impermissible to remain silent because of personal relationship. Wallah, he's my friend. He's my buddy. Yani ma'alish, let it slide. Mahi gadiya. Gadiya. It's a big deal. Because this da'wah, this da'wah scene cannot be hijacked or cannot be controlled by a few individuals. If, if many people are involved in da'wah, it is our communal obligation, all of us involved in da'wah, to make sure that everybody in, who has a platform, who has a microphone, is communicating to the Muslims the same message. And, we're not, yeah. and the beauty of the message that we're upon is we're not telling you anything that is outside of the Quran and the Sunnah according to the understanding of the early generations. What, yeah. better, what better thing do you want? How much simpler can it get? How much easier do you want it? It cannot get any easier than that. If we were had some hidden agenda and we're trying to divert you here or there, then you could you could we could worry. But we're mm. giving you raw, unadulterated, unchanged information based on how the Sahaba and the early generations understood it. And we're saying anything which comes external, any external element which is going to take you away from that, then you need to protect yourself from that. So then you answer the question. Debates. 
when did who gave a debate? For example, when when the Khawarij, when the Khawarij yeah. were on the uh, they were on the verge of of going even further astray, who who went to them to educate mm -hmm. them? Ibn Abbas. Ibn, Ibn Abbas, Turjuman al Quran, Habr al Ummah, one of the most senior scholars of the Sahaba. Not anyone, not just by the way, many of the Sahaba would be overqualified. Not mm. anyone from the Sahaba, a particular person went and they they were people with an actual shubuha. They were people mm. that actually were confused. They were people that actually lacked knowledge. So mm. his, if you want to call it debate with them, his debate with them was 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 legit and it had an impact. And those confused individuals saw the truth, and many of them, alhamdulillah, left their left their deviance and they came back to the truth. So this could be replicated today in this day and time. It could be that some of the scholars will actually debate someone that's trying to, you know, bring a new innovation into the religion. There's no harm. We're not saying that any and every debate is, is a complete no. No, because uh, Ibrahim debated with, with Namrud and with other people. We have many examples of some sort of debate taking place. We're talking about fine-tuning and creating guidelines and foundations and principles upon which we decide whether this person, the debater, is fit for the job. The subject that they're discussing is something that they are knowledgeable about. And then the person that they're debating is also a person like the Khawarij who didn't know any better. And there's a chance to bring them and their respective followers to the truth. You will yep. be very hard pressed to be able to meet all these requirements today. Honestly. Okay, yeah, honestly. Right and, now, and basically, in a nutshell, Sheikh, what you're saying is when you enter a debate, you have to go enter it with 110% that you're going to kill it. لا, لا. You're going there, you're going to kill it. مافي, no, no questions asked, no, it's guaranteed a kill. But what you just told, what you just said, اليوم, لا, it's not guaranteed. Maybe 1% you might win. كثر, يعني, as much as your hair on your head, ooh, you're entering this debate and you don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. Well, not your head, my head. Yeah, <laughs> your beard. Yeah. <laughs> But exactly, and, and people don't even know. They can't even assume what's going to happen. Like, what arrow is this going to shoot at me? And where and how? They don't know anything of that. And subhanAllah, Ibn Abbas, I just want to mention something. When he went there, he was so structured. He said he knew what their shubhat was. There's three shubhats. He talked to them about, okay, you have this shubhat, this shubhat, this shubhat. And then he asked them. He gave them conditions. He said, hmm. if, I, if I give you the answer, would you go back? Oh, yeah, okay. We'll go. Then he started... Refuting them and, and discussing it with them. Oh. He didn't do it publicly. He went to the Khawarij, only Khawarij. He didn't say, Ya Nas, Allah, come, debate, debate, come. Hey, exactly. That's the but point. That's the point. Exactly. Yes. And when you look at when you look at all the debates in Islam, most of them I say they were forced. Khali bin Abbas on this uh, the, with the Khawarij, it wasn't forced, it was something that they had to do. But most of them, Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, all the other people who were debating, Imam Ahmad, they were forced by Wadi al-Amr. Ta'al, we have a debate. You have to debate. And they debate, hey. and they get thrown in jail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was forced. <laughs> hey, and, so, and also, it was, it was forced, and it was within, it was within a circle. What, what we're missing on today is that we're having those debates on a public platform that is exactly. open source for everybody versus then where the the... the reach was very limited it was within yep. the circle of people that were present and and people that were aware of the situation like you said they didn't invite people from the streets they come and attend this debate between ahmed bin hanbal and you know the uh, uh, the the mu'tazila and the people back then the jahmites and others it wasn't a public uh, debate it was done within certain grounds certain people that were related to the subject and still like you said the, the alim would prefer not to argue. They would actually try to find a way out of this whole thing as much as possible mm -hmm. because they didn't want to get into this uh, jidal and, and, and jid with uh, Ahlul Bid'ah and the people of innovation, let mm -hmm. alone an atheist yeah, who's going to curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and curse the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you're bringing him to your audience of Muslims mm -hmm. and allowing him to even say a single word, to say a single word. Like, let me ask you a question. Are, are the Muslims, if, if a Muslim has a debate with an atheist, are you going mm. to tell me that any Muslim who's from among your audience is 
speculative about his Islam? Like, are they really going to benefit from this no, in a sense that exactly. they're not sure whether they want to be Muslims or not? And now you've, yeah. you've, you've nailed it for them? No. In reality, you'd, all you did was expose them to the doubts of the other person. Yeah, they were sitting in Amanullah Mabsutin. Wallahi, look, most Muslims, let's be clear. Most Muslims live their entire life without ever thinking about the concept of uh, uh, right-hand possession or slavery in Islam. Yeah. You're, just, you're just comfortable, alhamdulillah, you pray, you fast, everything. Some people now bring the shubha to them. And sorry, I'm doing this, but this is just as an example. Some Muslims right now who are not who are not really firm in their deen, as soon as they start thinking about slavery and how they were slavery in Islam and this, this and that and right-hand position, this becomes a doubt for them. And yeah. unless they have knowledge, they, they're not able to figure it out on their own. Now they rely on this debater's ability to address this issue and articulated mm. so well, bearing in mind that he supposedly has all the evidences uh, mm. for, for the subject. And mm. usually they don't even use evidences. They use what? Logic. logic. Everything, is philosophy. By, everything is by philosophy and by logic, which is a yeah. very, very tricky subject. Because it may work or it may address this issue, but open up another issue. Because now you will use those same philosophical principles to look at other aspects of the aqidah. So what about yep. the names and attributes of Allah? Then you go into this vicious cycle of confusion and deviance that you can never exit from. So yep. you, you realize when you're debating those issues, while you are achieving a certain uh, uh, goal, you're also creating a lot more drama and a lot more uh, issues and a lot more problems than the ones that you think you have resolved. So the end yep. result is al-mafsada, a'zam, min al-maslaha, the harm is greater than the benefit and you have done a disservice to Islam. In spite yep. of your so-called victory, in spite of the cheating from your followers, say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And by the way, watch how much it gets to your head. Uh, Sheikh Faris, when you start reading the comments, Ya Akhi, MashaAllah alayk, you are the hujja of Islam. You destroyed yeah. the feminist, you did. Yeah, and inshallah, if you were the most sincere person in the world, your head is going to get as big as, uh, as uh, the, a, a tall building. You cannot, you cannot, as you're a human being. And we I've have seen, I've seen some, some of these people, by the way, يعني, wallahi, nasallah, al this is just a sign. I, wallahi, we don't judge on intentions. Okay, we don't know what's in the heart. But some of these signs, you see, like, why would he do that? يعني, he puts a logo of a lion. Why are you doing this? So it's, it's not a good indicator, like you just said. Not at all. And by the way, the, the pattern, see, you see, you could see this. Uh, the, the bawatin is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we do the hukum bil-zahir. We look, observe, and yeah. assess based on the appearance. Look yeah. at the approach of most of the debaters. I will, I will make a few exceptions. They're extremely arrogant in their approach. Uh, condescending to the opponent. Uh, you know, again, like our brother Ali Da'wah, may Allah forgive him. I've never seen anything. I don't know if you watched this debate. Did you watch this debate with uh, with that uh, Abus guy? I watched it. I couldn't. <laughs> I yeah. tried. I couldn't. Yeah, and he's sitting eating grapes. Yeah, akhi, wallah yeah, al-azim. I, could, I don't I understand in which way this could be legitimate, this could be decent, this could be acceptable Islamically as, as a form of da'wah. When a person is, is ma making baby steps in acquiring knowledge, you're debating an atheist. You understand the atheist, their whole paradigm is based on confusing you. Where if you yeah. tell him this is a table, he will say, well, like the table, يعني, if, 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 if look at it from a certain way, this could be a table. Uh, in a metaphorical sense, it's really not a table. It's a bunch of chromosomes which came with them, elements and gravity. What? They are, they're made to confuse uh, the sound person. Yeah. You come and you bring those people, you behave and um, you become arrogant. You become, you feel that you're, you know, on, on cloud nine. And then that, that uh, behavior will carry on throughout your debates. And it's a copy-paste demeanor now, which yeah. is a very, very major sign. It's a very scary sign of things not being done in, in the way they're supposed to be done. When it comes to the debates, a humbleness actually is, is the ultimate tool that the alim should have because he's mindful mm -hmm. of Allah the entire time. Mm -hmm. He should be scared. His heart should be trembling that Allah has put me in a position to defend this religion. And I yeah. want to be able to successfully do so. You don't come with this demeanor where you, you know, you're, you're proving the opposite. And even the non-Muslims are looking saying, you know, what is this foolishness? You know, is this, is, this what, is this how your prophet behaved? Is this how you're supposed to conduct yourself? Mm. I mean, again, it's a lot of harm that is being done in the name of da'wah. And wallahi, it's about time that they stop. And even if they don't, 
I just want to add this. Even if they don't, and they will not, by the way, because a lot of this is business. A lot of this is views, and views is equal to money. Money is equal as. There's a big, there's a big, big story behind that. Yeah. Assuming all the sincere, the sincerity that they have, still, it is at the end of the day a business of some sort. It is a source of income for many of them. They're not going to stop you, my brother and sister in Islam. Wallahi, you don't need this. You don't need to these, see these debates. You don't need to watch them. You don't need to cheer. You don't need to take sides. You need to sit down and read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read the tafsir of Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Nasir al-Sa'di. Read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Learn something from the people of knowledge. Those who are well-versed. Those who are established in ilm. Those who can give you beneficial knowledge. Something that is good for you. Something that will increase your iman. Something that will increase your, your, your knowledge. Something that will benefit you in the dunya and the akhirah. The time that you have, if you have time, because a lot of people complaining about time, that time should be allocated for you to better yourself, not to watch two people argue. You do realize that you, all you did was basically buy a ticket to watch two people fight and you're just standing there, oh yeah, no, you know, watch it. You're, you're, you're wasting this precious time on something that will most likely harm you more than it will benefit you. No, who, Sheikh Wajdi, it's, it's, this is creating a trend among Muslims also. It's like the same the same concept, huh? A guy watches a movie, action movie, and he sees the hero, and he's doing some crazy stuff, stunts. I want to try this out. And this ah. is what's happening with the Muslims. Wallahi, people contact me. Uh, Faris, uh, I, there is this doubt I have. Uh, so and so and so. Like he explains, I don't want to mention the doubts, but so and so doubt. I ask him, before anything, I say, where'd you get this doubt from? Wallahi, I was talking to this, debating with this guy, and he threw this yeah. doubt on me and I couldn't <laughs> yeah. answer it. Now I'm stuck. I'm in trouble. Please help me out. I said, Habibi, what is it? not a hotline doubt uh, refutation thing? Why are, you, why are you debating with people? Wallahi, I want to give him a da'wah. Habibi, don't give anyone da'wah. Please just sit down and do, give yourself da'wah. And yeah. this is the problem. A lot of them, Wallahi, you, can, you should see my direct message. A lot of them. I don't even know how to ask. Where would you get this from? I don't even know where did you get this from. Like, I don't know the answer to them. And, and so this is, it's, it's becoming a trend. Some Muslims, okay, they don't want to doubt. They don't want to debate. What do they do? Uh, okay, now I have a, a little bit of knowledge because I've watched a couple of debates uh, refuting liberalism and feminism and atheism. Khalas, I'll make a page now and I'll have to attack someone. This, this is his Islam. I'll have to make a social media page and I'll put on some memes and I'll just insult other people other than Islam. And I've seen them a lot. Halal memes, yeah. Madrishu memes, Madrishu account. What are you doing? Why are you attacking other people? Like been you're attacking them and fighting, they will give you shubuhat and they will come and refute you and comment you and all that stuff. Ente, you're not ready for this. Habibi, like you just said, and wallahi, this I have experienced myself and I tell you this from my own experience. I used to go back then. I used to go on forums and I want to see what the atheists are. And this was a mistake, I have to admit. This is what I've, I've fallen to this mistake. And alhamdulillah, I got, I got out of it. I go into these atheist, uh, you know, fighting, debating atheist forums, and I start reading their doubts. Wallahi la ilaha One doubt, it fell in my heart, maybe for three, four years. I couldn't get it out. I couldn't answer. Like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, and it, it kept on eating me from inside. Alhamdulillah, then later I got rid of it. But wallahi, yeah. I realized it's not worth it. Yaqi, my iman, Allah Azza wa Jal blessed you from the mercy of Allah, khalak, mu'min, Muslim. From all the people in the world, kuffar, mubtadi'a, you are a Muslim muwahid. You don't want to cover and, and protect that? What's wrong with you? Like you just said, you're going into a casino and gambling with your iman. What if you throw it away? You come out kafir. Yeah, and yeah. These people don't understand this. Until you have the greatest blessings in the whole world. You have iman. Yeah, he protect it. Don't come expose yourself like that to these things. It's like someone who's someone is healthy. Like let's say Allah grants you health and you're sitting in a, in a room with a closed door and you know that as long as you're in this room, uh, speaking of Corona right now and viruses outside, as long as you're in this room, you're, 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 you're safe. Until you die, you will be safe. But yeah. you want to be a Mr. Funny Guy, open the door, Allah, let me go see what the guy next door has. <laughs> and you go walk around the hallway and you, you get exposed to, you, this virus might or might not make it to you. It might affect you, might not affect you. You might be able to go out and come back safely to the room. But in reality, is that an actual intelligent choice? Isn't Mas, it that yeah. you're supposed to stay in your room and, and, and have a peace of mind instead of uh, 
yeah, exposing yourself to the a bit, to the potential risk. Let's just say it's a potential risk. It's a, it's a probability. It's not guaranteed, but it's a probability that you just might get infected. If you were intel intellectual or intelligent, then you would not have done so. And that's mm. exactly why we say we follow Islam according to the understanding of the early generations. We look at how they dealt with those issues. They were not open. And they were not, uh, they didn't give uh, open arms and welcome the doubters and the innovators and the people that came with these shubuhat. As soon as they saw them, one of them, as Ibn said, he said, let me recite upon you one ayah. He said, wala ayah, not even one ayah. Yeah, either you get up or I will get up. The you student said, ya Sheikh, ish al mushkila yani, if he recited one ayah. He said, I was afraid he will, he will twist the ayah and this doubt will remain in my heart. Yeah. If they, so we, we follow the way of the early generations. They stayed away from these mawatin, a shubuhat, from these areas of exposing oneself to doubt. And I will guarantee you that the greatest platform today to expose yourself to doubt is debates. In yep. modern day, on social media, the greatest place, unless, like you said, you go to a forum of a bunch of, uh, you know, innovators mm -hmm. and you start reading their mm -hmm. articles. Next okay. in line, is you going actually watching a debate where this lady or that person will wind up saying one uh, one thing about Islam, two things about Islam, three, four, five, six, seven. And these are things that they've studied and researched and they already mm. know the truth and they've come up with an answer to the truth and a response yeah. to the truth. And then you want to you want to come out safe and peaceful from this entire project yeah. time after time. You're really you're really playing with your religion. And, and, and by the way, we all know, we all know people that have left Islam. Let's not beat around the bush. From yeah. Let's say from 10 people, two people will eventually leave Islam because of exposing themselves to this nonsense. Are you willing to, uh, to go to Jahannam eternally so you can enjoy a debate between uh, Fulan and Allan? La my seer, yani. this, is, this is ludicrousness. This is insanity. By, by the way, hey. Sheikh Wajdi, who started this trend? Who started this? Sheikh Al-Hizbiyin, <laughs> come let's uh, have sorry يعني. so come we'll have a debate with a with a not knowledgeable Shi'i because Shi'i also they have knowledge so they have some يعني, tough stuff to crack no, not yeah. to crack come we'll, come we'll have a debate and they start growing their reputation like that and they start crowding people like that debate debate yeah. debate but then he, he, he goes up uh, on publicly and he starts giving you aqidat al-hizbiyin and khawarij and takfir and all that stuff. It started like that. All of them, like most of them, this is one of their strategies. One one guy starts with debate. Another guy starts with uh, funny jokes and all that. Wahakada. They have personas of du'at that they just attract people. And one of their strategy is debates. So people need to be careful. And like you said, you repeated this a million times. This is like a golden rule. Tiba' al-salaf, bifahm al-salaf. People, if you look back, all of them, even today's modern ulama, scholars like Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymeen, all these people, where did you see them debating people publicly? Have they ever debated people? Nobody. Only the Albani, because of the situation he was in. People used to walk into his house, you know, Sayyid Majlis. They come in and they start talking to him. People are recording, recording. Everybody's recording. So we, we heard some of these debates. Oh, subhanallah. Don't compare yourself with Albani. Albani, <laughs> Even when he's wrong, he wins, by the way. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> even, even the opinions, if we don't agree with them, you're like, so, so yeah. wait, yeah, wait a like, second. Like. <laughs> hey, which, by the way, يعني, subhanallah, and this is maybe a, a point that we might have missed throughout this discussion, but it's a golden, it's a golden point and it's very important. Here's one of the issues that we have. Let's say, let's say like our brother D Daniel, let's say that this person really was well-versed uh, and well prepared and actually nailed it. He debated mm -hmm. a feminist or an atheist and completely mm -hmm. destroyed them. What is the yeah. downside of this? The downside of this is now your impression and your appreciation and your mm -hmm. attachment to this individual grows yeah. so much that now you will take everything from this individual. Oh, and that's something that I was experiencing. Yeah. So now, when, when, because Daniel is, let's say, uh, as an example, I'm using an example, and, and I don't care because the truth has to be said. Because he's able to be uh, very affirmative in what he believes, mm -hmm. he doesn't shy away. He's more on the offense. He doesn't play defense when he when he yeah. goes into any of these discussions. He he starts off. He starts off with the offensive, to the point that it confuses the opponent. 
So let's say this is a, a quality that is appreciated. Type with that in the same breath, he will use this, for example, to now make wholesale uh, uh, takfir of a lot of the people in charge. A lot of the yeah. people, if not all of them, you will hear him say something that there's no Muslim government right now anywhere in the world, or there's no this, or there's no that. There's nowhere where Islam is being uh, uh, implemented in any Sharia. There's no place on earth where Sharia is being implemented. What happens is now the followers now will absorb and and this yeah. and they yeah. will be now swayed in this direction. When we yeah. come and speak, then we become the problem. We become the yeah. troublemakers. We become the sellouts. We become the bootlickers, and the list goes on. So be careful. That when you one of the biggest issues is that that debater may be correct in that particular debate, but now you have to by force accept now his other positions. And if you don't have knowledge to filter what where he's right and where he's wrong, and if he has this strong hujjah, if he has the strong you're ability lost. to argue, then you're lost. Then you're That's lost. And yeah. <laughs> اي صح صح اي مجادل هذا عنده عنده باطل بس هي هيز فايتنج فور ذا تروث اند سو يو تيك هيز باطل ويز هيم يو تيك هيز فولس ويز هيم جست لايك يو جست اكسبلين اتس ا بيرفكت اكزامبل يا سبحان الله اند اتس ا سيريس ماتر طيب اي ثينك ويف ويف كفرد ويف كفرد ذا توبيك بروبرلي ان شاء الله تو ذا تو ذا بيست اوف اور ابيلتي از ذا اني ثينج ذات يو وانتد تو اد اني اني بوينتس ذات وي ميست والله اي I've noticed this trend, and I have to say this. Yani, I've I've seen there's a prevalence of of yani fikr fikr ideology a little bit of or a smell of of khawarij ideology within the within the English community of Muslims, and this is something that really hurts me. Yeah. Yani, they have this like you just explained with with, with Daniel's case. In the fee, there is a, a sense of takfir. And misunderstanding on the hukum of takfir, and hey. they apply it in a very wrong way. Udalilhum nafs dalil al khawarij. Lama the same proof of the khawarij when Ibn Abbas came and debated with them. Hukum bima ghair ma anzal Allah. Hadi this is their problem. No. Wa yaqi ijma ahl al sunnah wal jamaa on this ayah is crystal clear in the books everywhere. طبري بن كثير بن عباس من الصحابة إلى يومنا هذا العلماء يفسرون الآية they interpret this ayah the same way that we all know it has three situations people don't want to understand that but I have to say it إن شاء الله some people benefit from it الله عز وجل يقول في القرآن ومن لم يحكم بما أنزل فأولئك هم الكافرون يا شباب يا guys يا مسلمس this ayah is mentioned three times in the Quran It's mentioned, أولئك هم الكافرون, أولئك هم الفاسقون, أولئك هم الظالمون. And this ayah is general for you, for me, for everybody. It didn't say for the hukam. You guys have to understand this. And the point is, they say, والله, who doesn't apply Allah's legislation, خلاص, this guy clear-cut kafir. This guy is not a Muslim. And this is not true. The ulama, from, like I said, from Ibn Abbas until today, all the ulama, and it's referenced. They say, If he believes that hukm Allah, the ruling of Allah, is the better. same, better. If it's if the ruling of Allah is better than any other ruling, he's a Muslim. He didn't apply it. Yeah, he's wrong. He's sinful. He's ignorant. He's whatever you want to call him, but don't call him kafir. This is serious. If he believes it's equal to Allah's rule, his rule is equal to Allah's rule, or his rule is better than Allah's rule. Huh? Why? Because he's saying that Allah's rule is imperfect. He's Amen. saying that that Quran is imperfect. Nobody denies that. But this is the issue. They think, no. And then, on the idea, the takfiriyin or the khawarij, they are judging by rules. They have rules. What rules? I mean, they have assumptions. Allah, we saw a plan of the rulers. We saw a picture of him sitting with this guy. خلاص هذا كافر يعني. Like, mm. how did you, what happened? This is a picture. <laughs> what, what does the picture tell you about his heart? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But this is a problem with, with a lot of the youth. They are, they are always charged with hate and, like you said, rage and aggressiveness. They watch debates. They want to do takfir. They want to talk about silly stuff, like things that are irrelevant, Habibi. Wallahi, most of them don't even understand, they don't even... No, that can't even explain what is la ilaha illallah. 
and they talk about this crazy stuff تكفير وحكومات واسرائيل وضرب وما اعرف شو ولاء وبراء يا حبيبي شويه so cool down احنا 10 years time we've been seeking يعني I've been personally seeking knowledge for 10 plus 10 years time and these مسائل comes but we, we, we study them with extreme care and we have so many other things to worry about فما اعرف ليش يعني اسال الله I ask Allah عز وجل to guide us all to the truth but this is something that I had to be يعني had to be mentioned and said and we are not murjia like they claim into into murjia into ma'bla احنا we uh, we approve and we 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 understand what takfir is there is takfir it's a hukum but we apply it correctly just like what sheikh wajdi said according to the ulama according to the salaf according to the understanding of the of the ummah it's not something that because i hate this guy or i hate this country or this country is is a sellout khalas yalla kafir tala barra this is not your father's house habibi islam is not your house Islam has hukum. This is, this is the ruling of Allah. So we have to respect that. And we have to, if you want to understand about takfir, read about it. Understand it from the correct ulama. Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymeen, MashaAllah, 50 years of teaching Islam, you'll find the subject thoroughly explained and clearly clarified. You don't have to so, go left and right. And don't go to this alwan, utarefi, matarehalal. These guys are takfiris. No, don't, you, don't you know why they arrested? They're not arrested because they're cool or they're strong or they said kalimatul haq. No, Habibi. They said because they takfird me and you and everybody else. So let's not let's not compliment to injamil and cheat cheat others with our religion. This is something that's very very serious. Wallahu musta'an. Sorry, I took a lot of your time. No, no, that's perfect. Actually, that's that's because it's related to to everything we're saying. Again, yeah. the tendency that we have is they say if you're if you're not doing takfir, meaning now you're supporting of every uh, every wrong thing which may be happening. Yeah, why? Why? Where's the adil? Where's the justice? Where's the justice? The fact that we're Please. remaining silent as the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to remain silent, and he Ooh. gave us a window to express ourselves, and that window has certain prerequisites and conditions. If we are yeah. otherwise obeying the Prophet ﷺ, that does not mean that this is e this equates complete yeah. support and complete. Yeah, and it's something that goes without saying. My half of ninety-eight percent of our talks is against those things which you might be seeing. We're still yeah. verbalizing the rule of Allah. Huh? It's not like we're suddenly coming. Is, is, guys, by the way, music is halal. Sorry, I was lying to you all these That's years, and then, you yeah. know now I've, I've changed my position. Because there's a concert in this country or that country. Come on. Come on. The, the, the statements and the halal haram don't change. But the fact that we don't do takfir of people does not mean that we are endorsing everything else. But we don't, we don't follow our desires in this matter. We follow, again, the Quran and the Sunnah. Please understand that. And don't think it's bravery that you go against the Sunnah. You're not a beast and you're not a monster, and you're not Rambo when you go against the Sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, and then you want to expand your chest right now and you know prove uh, that you, you're not afraid of anyone. You're not afraid of Allah. You should be afraid of Allah. You should be afraid of Allah when you oppose the Messenger ﷺ. You know how dangerous this ayah is for all of us? Whoever opposes the Messenger after the truth became clear to them and follows a path other than that of the believers, i.e. the Sahaba and those who followed them, then we will let them go on this path and then we will admit it to the hellfire and a terrible abode. It's a By very serious... Yeah, tfaddal. I don't want people to misunderstand two two points. And okay. we and I want to also, يعني, I want you to share your views on this. Number mm -hmm. one, we don't, like Sheikh Wajdi said, and I think he mentioned it uh, broadly, is that refutation is part of Islam. That's on the Quran, the refutation, Allah refutes Ahl al-Batil, the people on falsehood. That don't mix debates with refutation. Well, Aslan those who know me, they know that I'm 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 refuting people every other day. So, they, 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 that's yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Aslan, a lot of the aqidah books are refutations. Aqidah is actually yeah. very simple. It's all refutations. Sahih. And another thing, we are not doing riba. We mentioned some names and all that. This is not riba. Exactly. When you mention your brother in something that he dislikes. But they mentioned that riba is permissible on, in certain conditions. One of the conditions is that when you warn against evil, batil, or wrongful, or falsehood, when you warn against that, that is permissible. As a matter of fact, that is nasiha. 
and inshallah as allah azza wa jalla yani yaj'alna min al-mukhlisin for people who are sincere Amen. and we get rewarded for it and we're not Amen. trying to backbite anyone because of his person no because there is falsehood we need to correct it that's it then uh, so sometimes I, I say something about someone eh hey, faris you're doing riba habibi what riba i'm i'm warning you against something from something i'm not just out of just desire i'm i'm yani backbiting someone or you know insulting or even insult someone i'm just you know refuting the falsehood and they, by the way, those same individuals that make that complaint, they accept that in the worldly matters. Meaning, if yeah. if there were a bunch of doctors and some some doctor came in into the uh, you know network of of doctors with some outrageous opinions which may harm the patients, nobody's gonna say. By the way, there's someone out there who's saying this and that. You're gonna have to say, yeah, fulan, fulan, doctor Batikh uh, Hamra is is saying A B C about this, and then you, if you don't, you're actually deceiving the patients and you're deceiving the body of doctors that you work for, and you're deceiving the hospital and you're deceiving the entire world. Because you're Absolutely. covering up for someone who's not shying away. It's not like he did this at home. He's verbalizing and communicating this to the masses. And we're all on a public platform with the public access. Then this has to be also be addressed publicly in the same manner. It's not rocket science. It's not uh, jealousy. It's not hatred. Or as many people make that assumption. I've made many clips about this. Uh, the, my audience should be familiar with, no, with that stance. Hey, inshallah, maybe that uh, yeah, the others will be exposed to it as well. Allah Musta'an, yani Allah Musta'an. I I don't think we could take questions and answers from the uh, mashallah. We have a lot of people here. Surprisingly, uh, we've we've gone overboard. I think I think we should we should call it a day. Uh, it is late for you over there, Sahih. Uh, do you want to have Do you have any final remarks, yeah, uh, Sheikh Faris? No, Allah, just to thank you and to, Wallahi, I pray for everybody and I always, I'm so happy that I see somebody like, يعني, I don't want to praise him too much, but he's a dear brother of mine, Sheikh Wajdi, and I get so happy to see somebody who's on the right path, who's teaching people Aqeedah, and he's on the, on the, on the Salafi Manhaj. Wallahi, Wallahi, I, يعني, this is something that, يعني, العلماء قالوا استوصوا بأهل السنة خيرا فإنهم غرباء. We are strangers and we have to be together. Me and Sheikh Wajdi and everybody who's listening to us. Guys, we are one body. Okay? And let's not divide too much because we've done so much already and the damage is done. But we need to come back together. And we need to just يعني, purify our hearts and go back to the right methodology. That's all what we're all calling for, uh, guys. Tawheed, Tawheed Allah Azza wa Jal. And ask Allah Azza wa Jal to unite us like he united us today here in this majlis, this virtual majlis, to unite us in Jannah. <laughs> في الفردوس الأعلى اللهم آمين 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 أنا وأنت والمستمعين جزاكم الله خير بارك الله فيك the feeling is mutual uh, شيخ فارس and there's a lot of other brothers out there um, that share our views that share mm -hmm. our methodology uh, بإذن الله we, we could all collaborate uh, more because there has to be a, a, some body of, of unity uh, for the people that, that are trying to communicate orthodox Islam that's all transparent straightforward uh no no water down just not water down just the straight straight islam that everybody should appreciate because it's in line with the fitra uh Absolutely. we're just trying to address your fitra trying to awaken your fitra our fitra everybody's fitra to go back to this deen and to submit to allah azza wa jal and to keep things simple allah azza wa jal has made many things simple islam is suitable for the 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 layman any average person any bedouin in the desert is able to, to uh, understand Islam, is able to worship his Lord. It is meant to be like this. Um, when we go out of this spectrum of simplicity and we complicate things, we achieve certain things and we lose uh, other things. And Absolutely. we are today seeing big losses, big losses because of this uh, philosoph. Uh, philosoph uh, oh, it's okay. Somebody's at the door. That's a sign that we need to, uh, we need to go away. Zakumullah uh, khairan for tuning in, yeah, and uh, inshallah we'll have another uh, another talk uh, together. Next time on CrossFit, uh, debate um, on CrossFit. Trust me, Sheikh. <laughs> trust me, you don't want to go there. <laughs> Allah I, Allah. I'm, actually, I I I I think you're more qualified than me. You might you probably will make me change my mind about CrossFit, and I don't want to change my mind about CrossFit. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk away from this debate. <laughs> Allah Sheikh. Should do a workout together once my neck gets healed. Should come and, and do a workout together. 
باذن الله نكست تايم من دبي ويل سي يو باذن الله جزاكم الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك اتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته